I go by Kristen and recently turned 17. Everything then began to fall apart. I grew up with what I considered to be a reasonably average family. Along with our parents, there was me, my younger brother, 10 years my junior. Dad handled management at Mom's family company, a business my grandpa had started from nothing. It all began with a series of coffee shops that finally developed into a premium coffee selling business. Grandpa really went out to acquire it. He did not, however, sell the company or let it fail when he made his retirement decision. He presented it to Mom, not sure. I recall listening in on the chat. Mom's voice was as plain as day. I'm glad I'm housewife. Allow John to deal with it, and thus it was. Dad grabbed control, and life continued. I first began to see the cracks in the basis of our family when I was in my teens. Mom and Dad started bickering increasingly. Mom picked at every small detail Dad did or neglected. She seemed to be trying to challenge him to his limits, therefore inciting him. She would also play the victim when he at last snapped and yelled. She would sob to anybody who would listen, asking see how he treats me. I just try to keep this family intact, he yells at me. I knew nothing about what to believe. Although I loved both of my parents, seeing them pull apart was intolerable. Although my brother was too little to grasp what was occurring, every time mom and dad would go at it, I could see the uncertainty and terror in his eyes. One evening, things got really tight. Hearing a smash, I was in my room trying to block out their most recent quarrel with music when as I hurried downstairs to discover a scenario that would fundamentally alter everything, my heart flew. Dad was standing over Mom on the floor, screaming, He get me! She said Dad appeared to be in great desperation. Kristen, I did not touch her. She slumped. I was assisting her in getting upright. Mom, though, was already on the phone phoning the cops. Not sure who to believe or what to do, I stood there paralyzed. I thought my entire world was falling around me at that instant. My memory is clear of the evening Dad was hauled away by the cops. My mind running with questions prevented me from sleeping. What happened exactly? Could Mom be hit by Dad? Why would Mom lie if he hadn't? The next three days passed in a haze. Dad was released without charges, and Mom dropped the case in a display of what she defined as generosity. Still, the harm was done. Our house was in intolerable stress. Mom painted Dad as a monster who had been torturing her for years, merciless. He's always had a temper, Mother would murmur to me while Dad was not around. From the worst of it, I'd have been shielding Tommy and you. The divorce proceeded more quickly than I could have imagined. Dad was looking lost in his own house, packing a single suitcase one day. With a broken voice, I'm sorry, kids. I'll fix this. I will promise. But in what way could he? Mom acquired everything from the divorce, the house, the car, even Dad's job status in the company. He found nothing left. Mom set Tommy and me down for a family meeting after Dad left. Things will be different now, she remarked, flashing a smile that fell short of her sight. Your father cannot now harm us. We are safe. Young and disoriented, Tani questioned, but when is Dad coming home? Mom's face stiffened momentarily before she faked yet another grin. Oh, sweetheart, Dad has some time to work on himself. Still, we will be perfectly okay without him. Something seemed off and I couldn't get rid of that, but Mom would shut me down any time I sought to challenge her account of events. You're too young to understand, Kristen. She would write dismissively. Active relationships are complex. Then, just two months following the divorce, Mom delivered even another surprise. One evening, she said, Kids, I have great news. I am going to be married. I stood there shocked. Married. But just two months have passed. Mom said, I know it seems fast, but you just know when you need genuine love. Robert and I, first sight was love. I got sick. How fast could she move on? And then, Dad, what about us? My new stepfather, Robert, arrived in not too long ago. 
He was all right, I suppose. While he paid little attention to me, Tommy, and he seemed to click, it made me feel even more alone to hear them laughing together and engaging in video game activity. Mom ran the family business in meantime and brought Robert to work with her. Tommy and I disappeared into the background while they were always talking about business, making plans. Between the recollection of what our family used to be and this new reality I couldn't quite embrace, I felt lost. I wondered where I fit in now as I saw Mom and Robert swoon over each other at the dinner table with Tommy contentedly chatting away. And between Mom and Dad, what actually occurred? Mom delivered another surprise on us just when I felt things could not get any more convoluted. She and Robert had agreed to relocate the head office of the company to another location allegedly more suited for business. They intended to hand all the capital to this new subsidiary. I originally gave it little thought. While moving would be difficult, at least we would be spending time as a family. Mistake. Mom knocked on my door one evening while I worked on homework in my room. Kristen, honey, you know Robert and I are moving for work? Yeah, when would be our leaving date? Already visualizing arranging my room, I inquired. Mom's face turned into something I cannot quite decipher. That's the point, honey. Given your almost finished high school, we reasoned that staying here would be better even though the new house is not particularly large. I thought of myself as having been gutly pounded. Stay right here. But Tommy asks. Tommy's younger friend. Ma answered fast. He needs us more. Besides, would you want to switch schools just before your tests? Staying with your grandfather would be ideal, in our opinion. What I was hearing made me incredulous. They were walking away from me. But Mom, I want to be with Tommy and you. Is there a larger venue we could find? Mom spoke in a sharp voice. Kristen, this has already been decided upon. It is best. Verify with me. And my universe collapsed once more exactly like that. Mom, Robert, Tommy were gone within a few weeks. I was living with Grandpa. Grandpa's lovely, not wrong. But I felt abandoned, tossed aside, like I didn't fit their new beautiful family. Not too far away was my 18th birthday. I mistakenly, maybe, hoped Mom and Robert would return for it. Not quite, though. Work kept them too busy to make it. Grandpa, bless him, he threw me a party and allowed me bring friends. It was different, but I valued his effort. Grandpa invited me into his home office early the morning following my birthday. He gave me a little folder and looked gravely at me. Happy birthday, Kristen, he replied, a glimmer in his eye. This is my present to you now. Now you are of age. Not sure, I opened the folder and began reading the papers within. My jaw dropped at my realization of what I was clutching. Grandpa, this, this is. He nodded with a smile. That's correct, young man. I am handing you the corporation. I stammered, me as well. Managing an entire business at 18. But Grandpa, I have no idea the first thing about running a company. Laughing, he, Kristen, you have promise. You carry it. You will grow, and I know you will do fantastic things. Then his expression went solemn once more. There is still one more thing. You ought to work things out with your father. As a consultant, take him on. He understands the company and, well, I believe there are some things you should hear from him. I faltered. Mom had spoken about Dad, and after all, I wasn't sure I wanted to see him. Grandpa had never, however, guided me wrong before. My tummy in knots as I walked to our table, I met Dad in a little cafe downtown. I saw him rise, a reluctant smile on his face. He seemed older and more depressed than I'd recalled. Kristen, he murmured, his voice gentle but wary. I can see why you're furious. Your mother most likely imparted a lot of information about me. Indeed, she did, I said in a snap. How did you treat others? Abuse how precisely you strike her. How could Dad? He drew in a long breath. Kristen, what your mother told you? That is untrue. You have to pay attention to what actually happened. Dad set out a narrative for the next hour that truly rocked me. 
He described how Mom had purposefully set him off, pushed his buttons until he was at last at wit's end. She had faked the entire affair the night I saw her on the floor. Your mother took the police statement back in exchange for me not claiming any property in the divorce. Dad replied, his voice laden with grief. She put me in position, Kristen. She got it. She wanted everything. What I was hearing defied belief. But why would Mom do that? And why did you not object as well? Dad dug into his pocket and grabbed his phone. Because of this, he said, running playback on an audio file. Cold and exact, Mom's voice permeated the space between us. John, here's the deal. You calmly go, sign over everything to me, and I will drop the charges. Fight me on this, and I'll see to make sure everyone thinks you are an abuser. Your decision. I started to feel ill. Dad, why did you not present this in front of courts? You might have cleared yourself of guilt. With mournful shaking of his head, Kristen, it would not have changed the result. Your mother had formed her opinion. More significantly, though, I wanted you spared any more suffering. You were juggling quite a lot already. In your adolescent years, you needed help rather than more family strife. Tears began to fill my eyes. Every bit I believed was a lie. I'm so sorry, Dad. I should have realized I ought to have put faith in you. Dad grabbed across the table and clasped my hand. Sweetheart, it's good. I apologize also. I know from your younger days that you worked too much. I ought should have visited more. For a minute, we sat in quiet, each trying to weigh all that had been spoken. Then, wiping my eyes, I realized why I had first gotten in touch. Dad, there's something else I have to tell you. I added, my voice faltering but deliberate. Grandpa, he handed me the business for my 18th birthday. Dad's eyes grew wide with surprise, then wrinkled with pride. Kristen, that's amazing. Your grandfather was always quite perceptive in terms of possibilities. He has to see wonderful things in you. At his words, warmth crept across my chest. But Dad, I have no idea about managing a business firstly. I need aid. Dad smiled right away without thinking. Helping you free of charge would honor me. I will walk you over all you need to know. I had a range of feelings as we carried on discussing future plans, including anger at Mom for her dishonesty and sadness for what our family had lost, but also hope. With Dad's support and Grandpa's confidence in me, hopefully I could make this unanticipated present remarkable. The months passed while I adjusted to live with Grandpa. I was wearing a cap and gown, honors high school graduate before I knew it. Walking across that stage without Mom, Robert, or Tommy in the audience seemed strange. Still, Grandpa's proud face and Dad's encouraging presence offset it. Graduating behind me, I poured myself into getting ready for college. My grades and extra activities helped me to get a full scholarship. After all, I had a company to operate now, hence I chose to study business management. Grandpa insisted on celebrating somewhat the day I received my admission letter. Two of us, some cake, and a toast to the future. The doorbell rang just as our second slice was under progress. Grandpa wrinkled his brow. Were you expecting someone? I shook my head, also perplexed. I dropped my plate, almost as Grandpa opened the door. Mom and Robert stood there, seemingly proprietors of the space. Mom looked at me hardly at all. Her gaze stayed on Grandpa, her face angry. Dad, we really need chat, currently. She went straight into the living room, Robert trailing behind, without waiting for an invitation. Startled, I watched her circle Grandpa. Why can't I get into the corporate accounts? She insisted, and who granted your right to stop the capital flow to our new subsidiary. Grandpa kept his ground, his voice cool but strong. Sarah, the business is no longer yours. Now it's Kristen's. Mom's mouth dropped. She appeared for a split second like a fish out of water. Her eyes narrowed then, darting between Grandpa and me. She snipped. What do you mean it's Kristen's? Exactly what I said. 
Grandpa remarked, for her 18th birthday, I handed Kristen the company. Right now, all choices about its future and budget belong to her. Mom glanced to me and the amazement on her face soon gave way to a simpering smile. Kristen, sweetheart, I have missed you terribly. Why not you join us, Liv? In the new city, we have settled really nicely. Blinking, surprised by her abrupt change of attitude, she said, we have a wonderful house. Her voice, honey sweet, you have a large bedroom specifically for you with enough of area for a computer and desk. One might work from home and learn. Would that be wonderful? I got a twingle in my chest. I wanted to say yes. Part of me still yearned for my mom's approval. Then, though, I considered all I had acquired here, all I had constructed. Startled by the consistency in my voice, thanks, mom, but no, I said, I am content here. My life, my pals, grandpa, and so forth. In addition, I shortly start college. As I kept my ground despite mom's machinations, there was an obvious tension in the room. Her gentle manner soon changed when she understood I wouldn't be moved. Fine, she said, losing the sweet coating of her voice. We will relocate back here should you not show up. Like previously, every one of us can live in our old house. Surely that would be great, Kristen. I shook my head, experiencing an unusual mixture of despair and will. No, Mom, neither is likely to happen either. Her facade was fast crumbling, and I could see the rage gathering in her eyes. Now or never was the question. My voice firm despite my rushing heart. Mom, I replied, I want you to tell me the truth. Between you and Dad, what happened exactly? Why, therefore, did you actually file for divorce? Mom looked confused for a single second. Tears flooded her eyes then, as if on cue. She wailed, Oh, Kristen, saying, Your father. He was so nasty. He put me down. He even made contact with me. I had to go defend Tommy and you myself. Her falsehood set out a flash of rage in me. Stop it, mother. I know the truth about this. I understand your framing of dad. You set him up so you might divorce him and claim all for yourself. Mom's tears disappeared from her eyes quickly, then a frigid wrath I had never seen before took front stage. Hissed. How dare you? You grateful child, you have no right to get involved in my personal life. Rising in voice, she turned to Grandpa. Everything in this place is mine. I choose where and who receives what. Who lives where? She rounded on me once more then. You will come home right now, Kristen, and you will turn that company over to me where it belongs. Startled by the poison in her voice, I stood there until Grandpa moved forward, his face a tempest of resentment and despair. That's plenty, Sarah, he murmured, his voice low but strong. You seem to have overlooked some quite crucial information. This property, including your previous house, belongs to me, not you, and the business which today belongs to Kristen. She owns it. I handed it to her to use as she thinks appropriate. Mom's face turned pale then, scarlet with fury. Grandpa shut off her opening mouth to argue. I have heard enough, he declared with conviction. I am embarrassed of you, Sarah. You were raised better than this. I now believe it's time for Robert and you to head out. You cannot kick us off. Mom shivered. Your daughter is me. Grandpa spoke with a stone quality, and Kristen is the granddaughter of my. A grandchild who, in the past several months, has demonstrated more honesty and fortitude than in years. Now both of you should depart. Grandpa led Mom and Robert to the door, and I watched a whirl of feelings inside me. Mom closed the door behind them, her face a mask of rage and incredulity. I collapsed into the couch, feeling exhausted as the sound of their automobile engine vanished. Grandpa sat next to me with a consoling arm around my shoulders. I started to wonder what would happen next as we sat there in quiet. Though heated, the conflict with Mom felt as though it was only temporary. This marked only the start of a fresh chapter in our convoluted family history. 
The morning Mom and Robert left, I woke to the sound of subdued voices downstairs. Curiosity overriding me, I slinked down to discover Grandpa and Dad deep in conversation in the study. Dad said, seeing me first, Kristen, come in, sweetheart. We were just discussing Tommy and you. I went into the room, clearly perplexed. What about Tommy? Grandpa sighed and cleared his mouth. I've asked your dad whether he would be ready to pursue Tommy's custody. My eyes grew wide. Absolutely. But just how? Dad nodded, eyes full with both hope and will. Your grandfather thinks we have a strong case, especially with, well, with what he's discovered. Grandpa went for a big folder from his desk. Kristen, take a seat. You ought to see something here. I opened the folder, shaking hands. Inside was a thorough private investigator report. Reading made me feel as though my planet was once more tilting on its axis. Mom was cheating on you, I told Dad, disgusted, with Robert for years. Dad nodded with a grimace. It seems so. Grandpa pointed to a number of papers, including old text messages, gift records, hotel receipts. Your mother and Robert had been carrying on an affair long before the divorce. But how did the researcher come upon all this material? Disoriented, I asked. Grandpa's gaze closed. Robert made a very important error. When he acquired a new phone, he tossed his old one. Our researcher found it, and it was a gold mine of material. I grew ill. But why then all the theatrical displays around the divorce? Why would you charge Dad with mistreatment? It was Robert's idea, Grandpa said, his voice low. Based on their messages on that old phone, he advised she frame your father for domestic violence. All of it was a ruse to guarantee she received everything after the divorce. Grandpa wasn't done even though tears seared my eyes. There is more, he added, flipping to another part of the report. That same phone exposed Robert's actual character. He is not the person he says he is. Kristen, he is a con artist. The phone had texts directed to other ladies, targets wealthy women, marries them, then vanishes with their money. The bits came together all at once. That's why he was so eager to move the business and distribute all the capital. I said, he intended to steal it all along. Grandpa gave a serious nod, precisely. And one more thing you ought to know. When I gave your mother all this proof, she balked to believe it. She is deeply in denial regarding Robert's actual nature and goals. I backed off, my head whirling. What do we do right now? We fight, Dad said with conviction, for Tommy, for the business, for the truth. Grandpa nodded in accord. I had already given my attorney a call. We are going to seek Tommy's custody and act to guard the assets of the business. Legal fights and emotional upheaval swept over the next few months. Dad battled nonstop for Tommy's custody, and I supported them at every turn, resolved to bring my younger brother home. Mom was trying to paint Dad as a monster, spewing stories of abuse and neglect, and the courtroom was charged. But within the mass of data we had acquired, her lies fell apart. As our attorney delivered the detective's results, the retrieved phone messages, evidence of Mom's affair, and the complex plan she and Robert had developed to frame Dad. The court listened carefully. The look Mom's face took when the judge granted Dad complete custody will never fade. Shock, resentment, and something else, perhaps the first flash of insight that her carefully created world was disintegrating. Not too long afterward was the last blow. Robert showed his real colors when he realized Mom was now left without the firm, without a house, and saddled with child support obligations. He vanished overnight, fleeing off with another lady and leaving Mom with just the fallout from her behavior. Mom tried to reconcile with Dad in a last-ditch effort, tears running down her cheeks as she pleaded for pardon. I was there when she arrived at our old house once more. Still, Dad stayed strong. I'm sorry, Sarah, he continued, his voice calm, but far too much has happened. Once more, I cannot trust you. Kindly go. 
The door closed on Mom's begging face, and I sensed a chapter of our life closing. Though unpleasant, it also seemed oddly liberating. After that, life found a different beat. Driven to learn everything I could about business management, I poured myself into my college education. I would read over corporate reports with Dad between lectures, learning from his experience. He agreed to operate the business until I graduated so I could pick the ropes free from pressure of complete responsibility. Still too little to completely grasp all that had transpired, Tommy flourished under Dad's care. Seeing them mend their connection and Tommy's eyes sparkle when Dad returned from work or when we all gathered Friday night for board games was heartwarming. Grandpa, who lived a few blocks away, was visited quite a bit. Sunday dinners became into a treasured custom. The four of us sat around his large wood table, laughing and sharing stories. Grandpa would enthrall us with stories from his early years running the business, his eyes glittering as he watched me absorb every detail. Sitting here now in my childhood bedroom, which once again feels like home, I am astounded by how much has changed. Our road here was difficult and agonizing, dotted with betrayals and unpleasant realities, but it also produced a family rebuilt, closer and stronger than ever before. I'm sure difficulties lie ahead. Managing a business is not a little chore, and the echoes of our family drama will probably follow years to come. Still, I am not terrified. Tommy, Grandpa, and Dad at my side help me to feel ready for whatever the future presents.